Desolate Ada. Hey, everybody, and welcome to my desk. It's me, Lady Ada. Mr. Lady Ada's on camera control behind the scenes. Yeah, and in happy the Armist Eve. Blasting some stuff off to the moon tomorrow. Oh, yeah, that's cool. Yep. Um, okay, cool. So um, this weekend, I, I you know, was uh, we went out for some nice long walks, and I came back, and I just, like, jammed down on a bunch of boards um, that have been waiting for parts um, over the last two years. I don't know if you knew, but there's this part shortage, which means I would sometimes get samples, design a breakout board or a dev board or whatever, and then be, like, stuck waiting for, like, six, nine months, year, 73 weeks um, until the parts appeared. And so um, there's a couple parts that showed up and also just some some boards that I've been meaning to get out. And I thought I would just show a kind of a little Stemma Sunday. Yeah. Um, do you want to show first one good overhead? Yeah, it's going to be overhead Let's and I'll it. show the first board. So uh, as we talked about last week, the CCS um, uh, 811B, which is a very popular um, gas uh, total volcanic, total vo volatile organic compound, not volcanic, volatile organic, um, and CO2, effective CO2 sensor. A lot of people really liked the CCS 811. I personally think the SGP 30 and 40 um, have been really good alternatives, but Cyosense did come up with another chip. This one's interesting, the ENS 160, which we chatted about last week. It has four gas sensors that are slightly differently doped, and then it takes the data and it does the merging for you. So one thing that's Nice about the sensor compared to like the Z mod and the um, sorry the Z mod chip and um, the BME six eight eight series is that the ENS one sixty does all that calculation for you like the firmware is already loaded on the chip and so you don't have to like link this binary blob with like weird licensing stuff going on. Um, so the ENS one sixty and then if we go to the computer. Um, Sciosense actually wrote an Arduino library. This is a kind of a you know. I, I know this is like no longer new, it's been a couple years, but I'm always kind of shocked now that um, sensor companies are actually uh, publishing Arduino libraries. And like they're like pretty good libraries too. They work, they work pretty well. So um, this library, was, what's funny is uh, I was telling Phil about this, somebody was like, hey, you know, I want a CircuitPython or MicroPython driver. And it's like, I, you know, because I wrote the driver and I was looking through the issues and I was like, yeah, I just wrote one, so check it out. Uh, and they just replied with a little thumbs up. But um, so I wrote a, a library for this in uh, Circuit Python Python um, yesterday, and it's uh, you know the code's working, um, and it's you know it's it's not a bad sensor. Like you know you know you can set the temperature and humidity, and then um, it basically does the data calculation and spits out um, air quality index, TVOC, E, ineffective CO two, and then you can also get the raw resistances. Uh, which I thought was kind of neat. Like they, they do the math for you to tell you, you know, sort of what it um, equals out as effective CO2 or as um, uh, air quality or like, you know, organic compounds. But you could also just um, get those resistances if you want to plot them. And so this uh, little driver I wrote, so I've got it going on here. Uh, you can see, maybe I'll make this text a little bit bigger. And then I've got this... Um, this uh, Clorox wipe, you know, this is a very handy thing for uh, testing organic compound uh, sensors. So I put it over there and you see um, the TVOC starts going up. It's like, you know, it, it doesn't go up immediately, but it's, um, it started with like 40 and now it's already at 200. So just, just holding this nearby, not right on top of it because you don't want to like poison the sensor by having alcohol directly on it. Um, but just wafting it nearby is a great way to test that this sensor is effective. Usually I would use um, some scotch, but you know, post COVID we have a lot of Clorox wipes. <laughs> Less scotch, more Clorox. We drank all the scotch. So um, this one sensor that uh, I wrapped up and I got the tester going for it. Um, one thing that's interesting, the sensor has both I squared C and SPI interfaces, but like Sciosense didn't even write the uh, driver for SPI. So we, we kind of only focused on I squared C. So that's sensor number one. Um, okay, next up, uh, whoops, I just unplugged it. Okay, so then let's go back to the overhead again. I'll show two more completions. Uh, so we chatted about last week the uh, LTR 329 and LTR 330. Um, so again, I'm, I, they both have the same uh, footprints as different boards, so I ended up just taking different PCBs and just soldering the, you know, just to, to get it going, just soldered the chip on there. 
Um, so the LTR303, I recycled an LTR390 board. And one of the things I really like about STEM IQT standardization, I know, you know there's some people who are like, ah, oh, I designed a board that used your old sensor, so, you know, you kind of just did whatever size, and now there's this new sizing. Um, it's great to have a standard, but not only is it handy for people who are doing mounting, because you can kind of easily swap boards in and out, because the mounting holes are almost always in the same spot, but it makes tester design a lot easier. So these are two testers, and these are actually generic testers. Uh, so you see here, they'll just say, you know, five pin STEM QT, and then this one is generic uh, six pin STEM QT. So one of the things that I also have to, you know, spend a lot of time on is designing tester PCBs. Um, but if I can just design some generic ones like these for, you know, the standard power ground clock data, power ground clock data int, um, you know, I can, uh, it just saves me a lot of time because we can, I can reuse uh, testers, I can reprogram them, and they, these all plug into um, an Arduino Uno. I just removed the Arduino because I'm, I'm doing different testers right now. But um, they just plug into an Arduino. So like this, this simplicity and modularity of sensors is, is really working out for me. And then um, you know, we have a buzzer and LED, and it just makes uh, the testing procedure and the designing of the testers like super stress-free because I can um, take an old tester, put this board on there, write the code, and then I don't have to like design a new board, which is, you know, always takes time. Okay, so that got done. You see, it really is a stem of Sunday. Next thing is, uh, we had someone request this. It's a um, STEMA QT hub. Um, and Mr. Lady, you recommended having it like kind of point up so it's, you know, you can mount it and you don't have stuff sticking out. Yes. So this just has five vertical uh, STEMA QT ports and they're all tied together. Uh, so I could just take this one and say plug it into, I'm oh, sorry, I can take, you know, I've got my. Uh, FT232 board, let me make sure I got this lined up. I plug this in and boom, you know, they all, they all light up and they're all powered and they all shame, share the same uh, data and clock lines and power lines is very convenient. And then they also have breakouts for the, you know, in case you want to breadboard this as well. Um, so handy if you want to, I, you know, all of our, almost all of our boards are chainable. You know, there's, there's a port on the other side so you can always chain them. But I did see someone who was like, yeah, like for the design I've got, it, it really wants to be a star shape. And I was like, you know what? You know, for a couple bucks, why not have um, this port? We also stock this uh, version from SparkFun, which is good too. Uh, I wanted something that was in kind of the standard sizing that I use. You know, I try to keep all of our boards as much as possible into this, uh, you know, 0.7 by one inch sizing. You know, again, the mounting holes always in the same spot. And so uh, I think between the two of these, you know, there's a lot of hub, hubby options. What do you think? Yeah. Cool? Sounds cool. Looks okay. Good. Moving on along. Um, okay, I got a bunch of other stuff. Okay, so then I also got this uh, Stomach QT shifter board that I'm wrapping up. Um, so this is if you have a five volt board and you want to convert it to three volt logic. Um, so this would be, you know, it's, it's inexpensive because of course there's no sensor. There's just a regulator and a level shifter. Um, so this is handy when, you know, there are some boards that are five volt um, or you want to, you know, plug this in and wire it and have some QT, but you also want like a regulator and shifter. Um, you know, there's a lot of times that I'm connecting up. You know, I, I do really still like to write my code for the Arduino Uno, which is five volts. Um, it's, you know, it, it's a very standardized way. I know if it works on that, it should work on everything because that's kind of the, the original official Arduino. Um, and that's five volt power and logic. So this is a little, a little accessory helper. You know, you, you plug into the breadboard or you plug in here and then it gives you um, five volt power and uh, regulated, uh, regulated output and then level shifted data. Okay, cool. And then, so today's STEM IQT board that I'm going to be working on, I just put it together, this prototype is uh, the DS4420. So yeah, again, I designed this in 2001 um, and I just couldn't, I couldn't make the board for like a year. Um, and then there were some parts on DigiKey which I, I bought before the show um, because I've learned my lesson, don't show off a cool part before I've ordered what I need. So I, I booked up the, the pieces. Um, so this is a, it's interesting, it's, a, it's an analog headphone amp, so it takes line level in, 
gives you headphone output, but then there's also I squared C volume control. And, um, you know, it's not a very complicated chip. It only has like literally one register and it's like you can set it. There's like a seven bit volume control so you can, you know, low and high. I don't even think it does balance or, you know, bass treble. It's really just volume. But, um, you know, that said, it, it's probably still handy. You know, we, I saw JP was working on a bunch of audio projects where like having digital volume control could be handy. Um, not having a digital, a digital potentiometer can do it, but, um, you know, of course you want to have, a, this is more repeatable. Um, it's got a lot, it's got logarithmic control already. It's by DB, not by, um, voltage divider percent. So you don't have to worry about getting a log pot and of course it also does amplification for you. So I just got this and I just like basically verified that I squared C scans, uh, correctly and, uh, so that's good. I'm going to work on the driver for this, although, again, a very simple board, like only one register. But, you know, uh, after having written a bunch of drivers for, like, the ENS-160 and the LTR light sensors, all of whom were, like, they, had, they didn't have infinite registers, but they had a lot of registers. And just making sure that we have the setters and getters for every bit uh, was a little bit of a, of a pain. So, so that's that. And then... Um, did you questions? Otherwise, I can show off some samples. Yeah, show off the samples. Okay, well, JP requested um, some new colors of the silicone wires. So we have these really nice silicone wires. Um, they're really durable and thick, and they've got, like, the premium ends on them. And we had, I think, like, red, black, yellow, blue, and something. And he's like, well, I want more colors. So these are, the like, the remaining colors purple, green, white, and orange. Um, and I just got, you know, a sample of, of the, the silicone colors, but they're, they're silicone, they feel good. They're squishy. And uh, so I'll try, I'll try these out, I just got these yesterday. Go back. go back in the little tubing. Okay. And then, um, you know, I've seen these magnetic cables before um, these magnetic USB kits, and they've always been kind of like somewhat mediocre, but they finally got pretty good. So this is a um, USB-A cable, and then it goes to these, um, you get different magnetic tips. Um, and again, these were not super great before, but they've gotten a lot better. So this is like lightning, and then um, USB type C, cute, and then uh, micro B. So the idea here is that you would actually, you know, you would, you would have this maybe plug into your board like permanently or not, not permanently, but semi-permanently. And then, um, you could connect and disconnect it. So this would be maybe a way to like, you know, people want to have like different dev boards and you just plug in whatever you need, whatever, and you don't have plugging and unplugging. Um, and then if you have like a micro B board, let me see if I have one out here. Yeah, like this clue. These are, these are quite magnetic. Yeah, so this is the clue board, and then um, you, know, you plug in either way. And what's interesting is these are bi-directional. I guess I should plug it in and see what happens. Hopefully it doesn't catch on fire. Always fun testing samples. You never know what's gonna happen. Okay, so let me plug this in. I have a little extension cord. Okay. So then, oh, it's nice. It has a little green LED. And then, yeah, it looks like this popped up. Okay, cool. And then I can also plug it into here. And then this, this popped up as well. And I do like, I do like that green LED. That's kind of nice. What do you think? Yeah. All right, cool, it's a good sample. And I like this is like a woven, it's a nice woven cable. So, you know, it's a little bit more expensive to get the nice stuff, but um, you know, anything that I personally use, you know, I'll probably use this cable because it'll be nice instead of like, you know, instead of having like all these cables, I need one of every tip, I'll just have the tips into all the dev boards that I use yeah. all the time and I'll just, I'll just break a, um, you know, break it and make the connection. Okay, so that's my samples. All right, wanna do some great search? Yeah, any questions or we just want to... Keep going. Let's get going into it. Where in the world is that part I need? The Great Search with DJ Keith. 
The Great Story is brought to you by DigiKey and Adafruit. Thanks, DigiKey. This is the time of the week, every single week, when Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you, yes, you, find the things you need on DigiKey.com. Lady Ada, what is this week's Great Search? I'm glad you asked. Um, so this week's Great Search is I just made a breakout board for the DS4420, which is a really adorable mono audio amplifier with i squared c volume control so it's analog volume you have analog in analog out but then in between you have an i squared c you know level control which is you know kind of handy like you can um you know you don't want to have a volume knob and you don't want to go digital and back out it's uh, fairly inexpensive and um as i was working on it i was like ah oh, you know it'd be really cool if there was a stereo version so i was like let's find a stereo version uh, so let's go to the uh, Sorry, let's go to the computer and uh, I'll show the DS4420. Uh, so this is, um, there's only one in stock because I just bought a bunch. I've learned my lesson. I don't do a great search and show something cool that I need uh, without me purchasing the number that I need. So I, I bought I bought up a bunch. Although there are, you know, there will be more available soon. Um, so the DS, okay, hold on. Let me look this up, the data sheet. So this chip, like I said, it is a um, amplifier for audio applications. Um, it has I squared C out, sorry, I squared C control, three um, address pins, um, audio out, audio in, differential, you know, analog ground. And then when you go down, 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 down. You can see basically there's like a control register. You can set the gain, mute, and standby. So handy, but again, it's uh, mono. So I wanted to find something similar, um, but uh, uh, stereo instead of mono. Also like, wow, 74 weeks. It's nuts. All right, so let's go to audio amplifiers. And so this is interesting because what I want, the, especially the I squared C control part is a little bit weird because there isn't like an interface box, right? If there's a box here that said like, okay, SPI, I squared C, whatever, but there isn't. And so we're gonna have to use kind of, I used a new technique to find this part. So let's start with active um, and preliminary. So I only want stuff that's out or about to come out. Okay, great. So there's now about 2000 parts. So next up, you know, there's this long list and you see they all have like features. And um, again, the feature I want is I squared C, but uh, you know, they don't, it's like there's no way to search for just I squared C. So what I did is I tried, well, what if I just put in the filter here? Um, and that was good, except that because um, you see there's this little like superscript I squared C, it didn't come up in the features, which is, Something I'll tell DigiKey they should, they should alias. So instead, I went down here and I found the, the superscript too. And I went back up here and then I changed this to um, filter on these. And then I'll say that, you know, there's some of these that are I2S and, you know, I, I kind of tried to remove as many as I could of them because I don't want I2S, I want true analog. And again, that's not a searchable um, thing, but I also didn't, I kind of didn't care too much because there weren't that many. And eh, this is good enough. Okay, so apply. So those are 200. Um, next up, I remember I want it to be stereo. So definitely don't want mono with mono headphones. Um, I don't want one channel, I want two channel. Stereo, 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 stereo. Okay, cool. I'm gonna apply this filter. All right, great, now we're talking. So um, the other thing that came up as I was searching is there was a lot of BGA parts and I like I had enough stuff going on in my life. I, I do not need to throw a BGA. I mean, I get it because it's like, they're meant for like headphones or like portable things. They need to be very small. Um, I do not want BGA, and so I'm going to um, make sure that I select only the non-BGA parts. So TSOP's okay, and QFN, no BGA, no BGA, no BGA, no BGA. I mean, I'm not going to get some that's 99 pins anyways, but I, I just basically did 
no BGA. <laughs> and that gets me down to 31 parts. So now, now I'm really looking at only the things that are um, available. Now most of them seem, there seem to be quite a few in stock. So let's look by price. So um, there were a couple. So this one was kind of nice. It's not in stock. Um, so I kind of, you know, it, it, it does do um, what it says on the tin. It's a um, class AB. So it's an audio amplifier um, with I squared C. You can see it has a little headphone and there's audio in and there's um, I2C. So it's analog, analog. And then if you scroll down, you know, they tell you um, the volume. It also has basically just volume control. And it looks like there's like a bass boost you can turn on too. So you can turn on, um, you know, uh, a gain, a nonlinear gain so that the lower frequencies have a little bit more of a, of a boost, which kind of sometimes helps with cheap headphones that don't have um, low frequency response. Bad news is not in stock. Uh, and who knows when it will be in stock. So that's what I found. This wasn't too bad. It's like, you know, a dollar in tape and reel. Um, the TPA 6130. So this part looked not too bad. One thing I liked about it, it has wide power supply. It has the audio, 64-step audio taper. Um, it comes in QFN and BGA, but I don't have to do BGA, I do QFN. And, you know, it's a pretty simplified uh, schematic. It's not too complicated. What's interesting is that you have a little um, charge pump inside, probably to, uh, to drive that headphone. And, and get it, um, I wonder if they have a false ground. Yeah, they do a false ground. So it really is meant for headphones. There's no um, blocking caps because it lifts, it, it just makes sure that the headphone output is centered um, around, about, around the ground so there's no DC uh, offset. So it's actually kind of a nice design. And then if you go down, you know, they, they also show you, hey, you know, here's what, here's how we do it with the, uh, bias voltage versus having it ground centered. Um, audio taper, you know, basically they do nominal dB gain to um, looks like negative 100 to 4 dB. And you just program, you basically just like write the register. Not a lot going on. Let's see, there's a few registers. Um, looks like you can mute each um, left and right and you can set the volume. So you know, basically four or five registers, very simple, um, but very effective. I actually really like this design. So I think I'm gonna go with this one, the, the TPA 6130, that's what I want. It's I squared C, voltage range, uh, no cap required, audio output, headphone drive, um, and stereo input and output. This is my pick. That's a great search. Okay. All right. And uh, so thanks so much. Some folks are helping each other out in the chat. There was a couple things. Here's one question um, sure. for that hub-like thing. Will it support multiple I squared C addresses? Answer, yes. Looks like eight available addresses. So it looks like the question and answer were Well, the, that hub is a passive hub. It just connects all the pins together. We have a different um, board that we already uh, stocked. So the DS4... Oh, oh, that, yes. It, it supports multiple addresses. There's an address selector. Okay. Eight? Jumper to the buck. Yeah, there's eight total. Cool. But, like, why not just have stereo, and then now you need only four? Okay. We're going to go back to work behind the scenes here. We have a bunch of stuff we're posting up. We have some time lapses. A bunch of neat stuff coming up on Ask an Engineer this week. Thank you so much, everybody, for tuning in tonight. Lots of exciting new products ahead. All right. Thank you, everybody. Not everybody. Bye.